Well, he's a magician, hypnotist, storyteller and bookseller. He has worked as a Royal Marine Commando, police officer, even magician and zombie. <laughs> and now to tell us more about his first novel, The Traitor and the Thief, please welcome to the Harvey Norman Lounge and the Cafe, Gareth Ward. Yes! Okay, I the great Ward Thank you. Oh my goodness, you're nothing if not diverse. Yes, indeed. I, I get bored very easily, so I like to do different things. I want to yeah. talk about the book in a moment, yeah. but first up, Commando. I mean, what was that like? In, what, what came first, Commando or Magician? Uh, commando came first. It was unbelievably hard. Uh, I learnt a lot about myself and about life, but being a magician is far more fun. <laughs> and then what happened after that? So you got into doing some magic and yeah. now you've got some bookstores. Tell yeah. us a bit more about how, where your life's at right now. Um, yeah, so uh, I started sort of doing magic when my son was small uh, and I really enjoyed it. Um, so I joined a magician society and sort of learnt to be a magician. And then sort of four years ago, um, uh, we, we bought a bookstore in Havelock North called Waldini Books. and. Um, just gone from strength to strength, love writing, love reading, um, and it's a great industry to be in. So you've been writing from quite an early age, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, r really since I was about five, you know, yeah. I've always loved stories, always loved writing. So you always knew you had a book somewhere there? I think so, yeah, I've always, I've always written, I've written sort of three before that, but this was obviously the one that's sort of, you have to get better and better, and this is the one that's sort of really hit the mark, and I'm so proud of it. Now, I'm fascinated, um, just before we talk more about the book, is there a magician society in New Zealand? Um, there are various ones in, in, in right. various towns, yes. Yeah. So if, if you're interested in magic, you find them and, and join your local magician society. Right, yeah. and then, so rather than writing a book and then getting a bookstore, you did a bookstore and then wrote a book? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, OK, yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. Oh, I love your eclecticness. This is yeah. great. So you mentioned that you'd had a few books before this. Yeah. Um, had been rejected by publishers? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'd, 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 I'd say the first one I wrote nearly got uh, picked up by an agent, but it, it didn't in the end. But I think it's like anything. You, you wouldn't turn up to a, a, an All Blacks training camp and say, I brought my boots, can I have a game? You've got to actually put in the hard yards to get to where you need to be. That's true, do yeah. a bit of training, that makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Well, yeah. I can say that you have hit the mark because oh, yeah. uh, I gave it to my 11 year old to read last night and uh, I haven't got it back yet. He Brilliant. sat there for a good two hours fully immersed in it. Yeah. Oh, it, it's a really immersive world. It's, it's a wonderful world. I absolutely love it. And, and we've, I've had brilliant feedback from sort of kids that have come into the bookshop and told me, and adults have told me how much they've loved it. Yeah, and it must be hard, I guess, when you're constructing a book, because kids, you know, they love their Wi-Fi devices. It's, it's yeah. hard to get them hooked in, but you've done it with this, because it's an award-winning book as well. Absolutely. Where does the steampunk come into it? Um, basically, I, I grew up near the city of Oxford, and I sort of knew I wanted to set it there, but I didn't want to be limited. So, um, for people who don't know, steampunk is basically a Victorian setting, but with technology that's way more in advance than they would have. Um, so that's where the steampunk comes in. And it's also a spy book as well. It is a spy book, yeah. The, the, the main character is a, a, a young boy called Sin, uh, and he gets he trains to be a spy to try and stop the, sort of the next great war. I was reading a review of it, and yeah. it kind of implied that this could be the next Harry Potter. It was absolutely glowing. It was an absolutely glowing review. Did you was... know that reviewer? No, I didn't know. <laughs> um, was that your no, no, it wasn't. I just I just spoke to, um, to spoke to her on the phone, and and she obviously really loved it. I was so stoked when I saw that in the paper. I had a smile on my face for like the whole weekend because I bet you, did. you know when you put these things out there, you don't know if people are going to like it, and it seems that they're absolutely loving it. So that's yeah. brilliant. No, and that's what you want, isn't it? Yeah, you just want people to enjoy your hard work. Really? So, okay, yeah. when you're writing a book, does it change? much to where you want it to go or do you, do you kind of know where it's going to end or does it evolve as you write it, it? it? For me it does evolve. I sort of I have an idea in my mind, I know where it's going but quite often it will change because the characters do things that you don't expect them to do once you get into them uh, and you have to go with go with them. So yeah, it, it doesn't end up always where you think it's going to be. Brilliant. And why yeah. young adults? Why 10 to 15 year olds? That's where you've aimed um, at, isn't it? I think that's because that's my mental age really. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, re I really love reading that sort of uh, age group of books. I, I think they're great stories, they get into the action, they get it done and they get back out. Well, if you write a good one, though, it can also carry over to the adults as well, Absolutely. Mm. You, you know, you can have a crossover book. And I've had a sort of adult stop me in the street who I don't know again and say, oh, I really loved your book, it was the best thing I've read in ages. So that's really excited as well. Yeah, and people love escapism, I guess, yeah, don't they? Yeah, you know? it's... Good. I guess we talked about it being the next Harry Potter. Could yeah. you see it being turned into a series and then some movies? I would absolutely love it to be turned into uh, some movies. Yeah, I think that would be fantastic. And, and I, uh, I'm working on a sequel at the moment, so hopefully that will that will come out. Um, a sequel? You yeah. need to be working on the next three books. Yeah, well, <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> uh, the thing too with children, uh, when you get them into a book, yeah. they want to read the series. Absolutely, they do. Yeah, they, they, like, they like reading the series. They like having them lined up on the shelf. Yeah, so, so you yeah. better get working. Uh, I'm working as hard as I can, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, congratulations on Thank an awesome book. And, of course, it's award-winning as well, and people are loving it, which is great. But before you go, are you keen to show us a magic trick? I would trick? like to show you a magic trick. Yeah, cool. talk cool. about magic, but that's got nothing to do with magic. <laughs> no, no, no. So, um, I, was sort of, I was going to use my playing cards, but what I found was my, uh, my daughter had sort of drawn some little pictures. I think that must Aww. be you, and I think that must be you, Mel. There. Oh, that's definitely yeah, me. Yeah, oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, it is quite sweet, but she's 21, so, you know, she should know. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I just get you to draw, uh, put your initials in the centre of each head for Ooh, me? OK, cool. so I do... Yeah. M. Yeah. Do you want to do yours, Mike? Oh, you're true. Oh, he's Mike too. Oh, but you're a boy. <laughs> I'll Mike. go MP. Okay. Should just, I go MP? Just, put, just do it M in that one as well. Just M in this one? Yeah, cool. Cool, brilliant. Okay, you're cool. this boy, so we can tell them about Oh, you're true, you're right. Okay. okay. Um, so I'm going to mix them up. OK, and I don't, uh, you know, I don't really want to know which one's which. I don't want you to know, because that means I can enjoy it. But can you just put your hand out flat for me? And I'll put that one on there. Can you put your hand on top? Now, what do you think you what, what one do you think you've got? Do you think you've got me, or do you think you've got um, yourself? I've got me. You think you've got yourself? Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, you think you have got yourself? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think you've got. Um, well, I've I've got you. Okay, I've got you there. Okay. So what we're going to do is though, I am a magician. I am a hypnotist, but I'm also um, I used to be an escapologist. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can make it an escape. So if I just wave my hand over there, what we find is now I have myself, <laughs> and you now. Must have you. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Oh, it like a little bit of shoo shoo. Shoo shoo. <laughs> well, I was sitting right here and cool. see anything. Um, you it's know, almost like magic. Yeah. I like. Yeah, no, no, I <laughs> loved it. <laughs> hey, well, the book's a great read. Um, congratulations. And Gareth's book, The Traitor and the Thief, is out in bookstores now. Yes. Thanks for the visit. <laughs>